Uh, good afternoon, Mike. Uh, how, Hi, how nice is it to have Julio Jones not only on the team, but have him out there today and start uh, getting a look at him in person? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that that's the whole idea is to to have the, your, your players practice and the ones that are new to our system, uh, try to get them in here and, and get them acclimated to how we do things. You know, every every place is different. And, um, you know, but it, but it is exciting to, to have them in here and, you know, go through our meetings, and start to learn teammates and figure out who those people are and, and how they, they interact and uh, as well as, you know, some of some of our offense and the installation. Jim Wyatt. And, and what's first for him, Mike? I mean, I guess getting to acclimate is notice you spent a lot of time with Todd, maybe with the quarterbacks. How important is it to maybe get him up to speed now where it's better at training camp? Well, I think that that's, um, you know, something that's important. As soon as you can learn what to do, uh, and how to do it, you can transfer that uh, out to the to the field. And, you know, he's, he's you know, run a lot of routes and caught a lot of passes and, and been a very productive player. Um, you know, but, I, but I think that these things take time uh, in, in new situations. So you know, that's that's what we're focused on now. And, and that's why he was, you know, back here today. And we'll see him, you know, next week when we when we finish up the, the offseason program. Joe Rexrod. Mike, how do you think Julio Jones fits into this offense? But what do you what do you think he does for other guys on this offense? You know, right now, Joe, we're we're trying to to really you know, get him acclimated, and you know, certainly uh, he's a productive player. He's a big target, strong hand, sure handed. You know, just really have enjoyed his attitude and the interactions that I've had with him um, about our football team and about how uh, you know just just his willingness to come in here. And, and try to learn how we do things. So, you know, his impact, um, you know, obviously can, can help a lot of people. I think you know, there, there's ways to do things and, and then veteran players that have been successful in this league, you know, can also try to explain things to younger players. You know, sometimes that's, those are, those are your best coaches. And uh, I'm sure he'll provide some of that, but uh, you know, ultimately we're just trying to figure out where he fits in and, and how he, best gets acclimated to to our system. Luke? Mike, you talk a lot about wanting to have versatility, and now you've got at least three receivers in Julio, Josh, and, and AJ who can play sort of all three positions and move inside and outside. What does it do for a passing game when you have those options to move guys around and know when is the you know designated X or designated slot guy? Well, I think that is important. I think that's probably what we had talked about earlier uh, in the off season about the, the conceptual learning Luke is knowing the, the entire play or knowing the entire route and the concept behind it. And, you know, are you going to be on the front side of the read? Are you on the back side? Uh, when we call different formations where, where you are at based on, you know, which one of those receiver spots you're playing. And uh, yeah, I just think it gives a lot of versatility to, to where we can line guys up and, and how we, you know, function as an offense and, and how we, you know, personnel things and, and who's in the game on certain packages. Paul? Hey, Mike. Um, he Paul. obviously worked a long time with, with one quarterback. What can you do to facilitate uh, he and Ryan learning each other and how much time goes into that? How do you deploy things maybe differently during camp than you would usually? I think that that's the most important relationship. Uh, if your receiver is the one with the quarterback, you know, we talk all the time. You know, there's a, there's a play that gets installed and um, it, you talk about man or zone, or you talk about spacing or, or running a route. But at the end of the day, if I'm a receiver, I'm going to be where the quarterback wants me to be uh, when he needs me to be there. And so that's my message to them is, is figure out you know, quickly where the quarterback wants you to be and, and get there. And, and if you get the ball, take advantage of your opportunity. So, I think to, to your question, the only way that they do that is by practicing, by meeting, by having conversations, um, you know, no different than than what we would have you know, any of our quarterbacks or wide receivers do, uh, you know, when they're coming in here probably for the first time. Teron. 
Yeah, what's up, Coach? Uh, the the conversation, kind of like with the onboarding process for Jones, uh, how did that go as far as talking to him and, and making it clear, hey, you may not get nine to ten targets, but we'll 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 get you involved, but it's it's a team offense and, and that kind of thing. Well, I mean, I think, you know, John, you know, touched on, you know, some of the onboarding process that you, that you are referencing. Um, and as always, conversations that I have with, you know, with our players are going to stay, you know, between me and them. And, uh, but we have expectations here. Um, you know, we're going to tra- treat every player the same way they treat the team. And, and, and that's no different than from for Julio or for, um, you know, Racy McMath. That's just, you know, that's what we believe in. And, you know, we try to make our expectations here uh, clear. We try to be you know, direct with the players and, and try to get them to understand, you know, the way that we, um, we do things. And there hasn't been any sort of issue about you know, really anything. And we'll, like anything else, we'll, we'll continue to, to make those expectations clear and, and how we do things and what time we're out on the field or how we practice and, and all those other things. John Glennon. Mike, um, I was going to ask you on, on Julio also, just kind of wanted, wondered what your impressions were of, of how he has, you know, come into a, a brand new team for the first time in, in over a decade, you know, how he's approached new teammates, uh, new coaching staff, uh, you know, OTAs, et cetera. Uh, yeah. Just kind of how he's gone through this the first, you know, few days. Yeah. Um, you know, he came in after, you know, for, for I guess would be the physical and um, had a conversation, you know, with, with me at length, had a conversation with Rob and Todd and went through that, that first day of meetings and you know, need, needed to go to back back to Atlanta to get some stuff. And and then we asked that he communicate with us when, when he was, when his intentions were to come back and said, I, I want to come back Wednesday night. I want to be there uh, and, and working on Thursday and, you know, obviously be a part of the, the mini camp. So all, all the conversations that I've had have been, you know, positive um, and, and really good. And they've you know, been open dialogue. So there's really appreciate that. You know, I know going to a new place, you know, sometimes is, is different, but that, that's what it's going to look like. You know, every year that things are different and there's, there's change throughout the NFL. Harry. Coach, uh, when you bring in a guy who's accomplished as much as Julio has, is it still uh, a long acclimation process or is it made much quicker given what type of guy he is and how long he's been around? You know, Terry, I'd, I'd hate to say one way or the other. It's going to take as long as it takes, you know, and – you know, we'll see where he's at as we work our way through the end of mini camp, and you know, unquestionably excited about having him. But to say, you know, there's some sort of timetable on when he's going to know the entire offense and, and every detail that goes along with it, I, I I hesitate to try to predict that. Jared Stillman. Hey, Mike. You played against offenses in your days, whether it was the greatest show on turf or the Peyton Manning Colts teams that had multiple Hall of Famers on them in their primes. What was the key when you played against those and then when you played with them in New England with a great offense for that kind of offense with all of those great players to mesh well? What's the key for this group to mesh like those groups did? I mean, I think it's, you know, it comes down to always putting the team first and, and being willing to do whatever's best for the football team. And we understand that, that there's a, a lot of people that you know, right now we'd like to get the football to. They only give us one football. So you know, I think that that's on our – that's what we're charged to do as coaches to make sure that, that everybody fits into you know, what we're doing and, and get them to buy in to, to how – what we believe in. David Beauclair. Mike, I'm sure you want to answer Julio questions all day, but Adam Kuhn, what, what's the challenge in the jump he's trying to make, and, and what have you seen that makes you think he's got a shot to do it? Uh, just, you know, just wanted to try to take a look at, at Adam. You know, I'd followed his wrestling career uh, for a while, and 
something that we we looked at and I you know, again I was a part of as as a player taking a, a former wrestler and, and they developed into an offensive lineman with with Stephen Neal you know they they are uh, they have great you know wrestlers especially at that elite level have have unbelievable balance uh, core strength things that you know I think would translate well to an offensive lineman but having not played the game there's a lot of development uh, that has to go on you know, pretty quickly for, for him to compete. But he's got a great attitude. He shows up, uh, he competes, he goes hard. And he just might not know what, what to do all the time. And, you know, I think we just have to continue to coach him and develop him and see you know, what, what, we, what we can get out of him and how he develops. Kayla? Hey, Coach. Um, I Hi, know Kayla. that it's <laughs> – hey there. I, I know it's always cool when something like this happens. You get a big name, a pro like this – even just for us to see and watch, but how much can this just bring the energy of the team up? I mean, when you watch those guys out there, it's hard not to look at him and see what he does. Uh, you know, I, I think that, that, I think there's just excitement um, from everybody, Caleb. I think that, uh, you know, you guys are um, unseasonably pleasant today as well. Um, I'm sure. Our fans are excited. Uh, our organization is excited, but, you know, we, we have to we have to get to work. We got to put the work in, and uh, that that's what it comes down to in this business. It's it's not about what you've done; it's about what you're uh, willing to do and what you will do. And, and I'm and I'm confident that that Julio uh, has begun that process. Ben Arthur. Hey, Mike. Uh, you know, you, you obviously you know talked about how you know your your conversations with Julio are you know you know for private but um but just kind of generally speaking have you just gotten the sense that he's just kind of eager to maybe maybe prove that you know he still has kind of a lot left in the tank you know a lot has been made of his age and just the injuries the the, uh the lingering injury he he dealt with last year do you just feel like he's really just kind of driven just still has you know a pretty big fire just in terms of um getting out there and and showing people what he can do well i I would I wouldn't want to speak for Julio or, or any of our players. So, you know, I think that that would be a, a great question for him. I think that that is something that, that I wouldn't want to comment on. I, I just think that you know, whatever everybody's motivation is, hopefully uh, winning is, is high on that, that priority list. Buck. Hey Mike, I know the uh, the off season with mini camp is not yet over, but what kind, what kind of growth have you seen that you've liked from the from the tight end position? Well, I'm at, you know you see him showing up more. I think you know Anthony has showed up in the red zone. You know, Fergus, you know, been a player that showed up in the red zone. That you know, on third down, uh, those, those really critical situation downs and, and areas of the football field. Uh, you know, and and they continue to to improve, and you know. We're going to keep working and, and building with that group. Tommy Hudson has been here, uh, and he was a young player that was with us on the practice squad. Uh, you know, and I, I would say that Buck, that the biggest improvement we're going to have to wait until you know training camp when we have you know pads on and, and we're running the football. Um, but that that's really where some of those guys are going to probably come to light and make the most uh, progress. You know, is going to be in our in our run game, and, and then there's certainly there's there's routes and things that they do on first and second down. But you know, Ferk right now is primarily you know that third down and tight end, and, and, and maybe that guy that we would look at in the red zone. But the other guys would, would be predominantly uh, evaluated in training camp. Diana Rossini, coach, it's. Uh, pretty evident here in, in the way you're talking about the Julio situation that no matter what, it's certainly not going to change the way you coach this team, which is team first, playmaking second. But maybe it's a little bit of a stretch here. Obviously, in your own career as a player, you you went from one team spending over a decade in New England and then getting traded. So you kind of have something in common a little bit with Julio. Have you leaned on that at all or have you shared with him, you know what that's like to just go to a completely new place and really know nothing? Well, we, we've had some, some really good conversations. Uh, I wasn't nearly uh, half the player that, that Julio Jones is. Uh, <laughs> I was a throw in uh, with Matt Castle. So, 
Um, I don't even think they knew I got traded. I, it's been really, it's been really, you know, refreshing. I, I, I really feel a lot when I have conversations with Julio and, you know, Rashawn and, and Derek is, is how these guys were coached in college. And I can always uh, really appreciate um, players uh, that have come from places like Alabama, where there's so much consistency in, in how they do things. And, and listening to Nick Saban, and Coach Saban talk about, you know, this is how we do things. And it doesn't change. The players may be different each year, but, you know, or the coaches come in and we lose a lot of coaches, but you know, we're still going to do things the way that we do them. And um, we've had some great conversations and, and we're excited about having, having Julio here. Couple more for coach Emmanuel Morgan, New York times. Hey coach. Um, it seems like the value uh, for receivers is kind of like changing over the past two seasons. Uh, Julio and DeAndre Hopkins were second round picks. Um, from your perspective, why, why is that? And then from coaching perspective, how valuable is it to have a number one guy uh, as a receiver? Well, Emmanuel, I, I can't comment on the, you know, the analytics behind it or the compensation. Um, you know, we made a deal. I think, you know, one thing I do know about deals is that you know, everybody has to feel like they, they got something out of it. Um, Atlanta got compensation. You know, it's great to work with those, those people, with, with Arthur and, and Terry like John mentioned, uh, and, and then we got a player that we're excited about. So uh, as far as having a number one receiver, you know, we're just, we, we really are looking for guys that, that get open that catch the ball and are, are willing to, to try to block and finish longer than the guy with the football, you know, whether they have it or, or somebody else does. Jim Wyatt. Mike, what do you like about what you've accomplished during OTAs and what's maybe important next week as you wrap up the offseason with the mini camp? I think we've improved. I think our conditioning has improved. You know, Jim, we feel like you know, we, we play a certain style um, and, and stress the effort and finish on, on every play. And you know, to do that, you have to be uh, conditioned enough to, to play that way. And I think you know, there's one thing about being able to run and and go out there and do some forties or fifties or whatever they are, but the, your ability to, to go and play the football game and go play the game uh, in the manner in which we expect it to be played takes a level of condition. And so I think that's improved. Um, you know, we've, we've gotten a lot of third down in, we're moving on, we've got some red zone in. So just excited to, to finish up uh, next week and, and move on into the summer and, and get these guys back. Road. Okay, back to Julio. Uh, Mike, I did want to ask you, speaking of conversations, uh, it was reported you uh, talked with Nick Saban multiple times. Just wondering if you could uh, clue us in on any of those conversations and others that you had. What were you trying to find out? What did you come away with? I would say that I've, you know, had a really good relationship with, with Coach Saban. Uh, he's, um, he's welcomed me down there to, to – really just try to get better and improve as a football coach. And then, you know, the ability to call him and ask him about a situation about adding a player that he's coached was, was something that you know, I was able to do. And like a lot of the conversations that I have with, with other people that you know, would say that he's here and you know, coach Saban obviously thinks a, a great deal about Julio as a person. 